So in my last couple of videos, a lot of you guys have seen my back with no electrical tape around the round bars for my bar tape. Editor, insert bike picture now, here. Yes, I know my bike looks very sexy. And secondly, you guys just got duped because that wasn't an editor, that was me. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to wrap the bars I do. Reverse wrap, there's gonna be no electrical tape showing like this damn duck, this it's you, <laughs> you met it, you met it. And we're gonna remove all this and we're gonna show you guys how to do that today, all right? So stay tuned. I have for you guys my tape of choice but I'll get into what we need to do. So for this procedure, all you're going to need is your bar tape of choice and a pair of scissors to cut the ends of it. I do recommend something with a strong adhesive, okay? Uh, on the tape for backing. I know Supercast has a really good backing of it. There are other companies out there that make a good one as well. Um, just make sure you pull the tape tight. And also for the bar plug, something with a lock on there. I have done this method before without the lock bar plugs on there before and they work fine as well it's just these seems to be seem to be a little bit more secure and when you put them in there they go in very nice uh so i'm going to take apart this brand new bar tape that's on here r.i.p for the scott rc15 attic right here for this bar tape but uh i'm gonna take this off and i'm gonna put my own stuff on here right now all right so let's get into it And that's how you raise your FTP by 200 watts. Anyways, um, so let's get into the video. I have my tape here. All we have to do is unbox it. And we're going to start on the bar tape. Things to know before you begin. Have your tools close by while doing your bar tape because once you get to the bottom, you're not going to want to let go of your tape. Have your scissors nearby to cut it. Have your bar plug nearby to plug it. Um, also, I know that this is much easier for me because I'm a bike stand. If you guys are big bike enthusiasts, I do recommend buying a bike stand for your home as well. It makes working on projects like this much easier. If you guys do not have something like this, maybe a floor stand to hold it or get your significant other. Or if you don't have a significant other to hold the bike, um, then just your SOL and, and good luck, buddy. But so what we do is we pick a point where we want to start at. So I want to start, I always kind of gauge it off by whatever, you know, whatever preference to me, but I like showing... Let's say three fingers. Okay, calm down, guys. All right, I don't know what you guys are thinking. <laughs> uh, so we go three fingers. I start at the bottom, okay? And I kind of go almost to where the back is of the bar. All right? And then I give it a nice firm hold down and a nice tug. And I make sure that the tape is overlapping the back of it. And I do not want to see any of the excess sticking on the side. I want to make sure I cover it. So once I get that, my main goal is now to get this adhesive strip that we see right here. Okay, you see this adhesive strip? This strip right here. We wanna get this pretty much in the middle of this every single time. One touching the tape, half touching the tape, half touching the bar, and then we just go around it like so. So let's go ahead and get at it. And this, I'm only gonna do it for one side, the whole video of me showing you guys. And then the next one, just time lapse it. But I, I got a nice grip on the bike and I'm giving a nice firm tug on it each time I go around. We wanna make sure this is key to this process because of the fact that this is what's going to hold the tape in place that you guys always say that's gonna come loose. It doesn't need to be super tight to the point where there's no padding. There's still tons of padding in this tape, but we want this to be tight and we wanna make sure this adhesive strip is on the bike itself. Just so focus you on this. And then we'll get, once we get to the S turn or the figure eight that everyone likes to call it, I'll show you guys. And you guys are probably wondering, GC, how are you so good at wrapping bars? Well, one, I work in a bike shop, but two, I also played hockey for about 15 years of my life. And um, and during hockey, we had to wrap hockey tapes, uh, hockey sticks. I had to do my own, so that's where I got it. Okay, so we're getting to the figure eight. Let me uh, switch this up, get serious. All right, so this is where we're going. We're still going the same way that I'm doing it. Nothing changed. Uh, this is what, we have two ways to go about this. We can use the extra piece of bar tape that they have and put it over this little uh, shifter clamp right here. That way it covers up for your tape, so if you have any mistakes, it doesn't show. But I'm going to go out like a complete chad. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So I'm going to go over one more time. And pretty much right before I hit that plastic shifter part, this is where I'm going to start my figure eight. So I'm going to go pull tight. I'm going to go down. I want to get right underneath that shifter right there. So as you guys saw, I went down 
and under. Now I'm underneath the shifter. So now we're gonna go back up. That's where we're gonna do our cross at. And we're gonna go over and we're gonna hit that nut right there. So you can see right there. We're on top of that, pretty much that shifter nut right there. We're gonna go over. Again, pulling tight. We wanna make sure this part's tight. And we're gonna cover that right there. And this is where you can kind of manipulate the tape. Obviously I want to kind of come down first and then to the side, so I'm gonna pull down and go right there. So now we can see we have everything covered on this side and there's gonna be everything covered on the other side, which I'm gonna show you. But now once we go, we're pulling over, we're gonna now continue our tape job and get as close as we can to that top one. So right now I just went down, around, and now I'm just going around now. And that's it, okay? And now we wanna continue our tape. We wanna pull snug on it. Ooh, keep on going, keep on going. Mm, careful, SpongeBob, careful. Hold on a second, let me change the camera angle. All right, so all I did was just unravel it just a little bit. We're still good. We're checking to see if any spots are showing of the caliper or anything like that. And we're just gonna go boom. We're gonna pull a little bit tighter. We're gonna go a little bit lower. And as we're doing this, we're checking the feel. If any bits or pieces or excess are showing, but now we got enough room. Now we got a little bit more give on this tape to get to the bar plug of the area of where I want to get to. So now all we got like this. You can see we have a little bit of nipple showing and just a little bit of overlap. So this is the part where I can see our seats. Boom. All the whole bar is completely covered. I can take the end piece right here. And as I'm doing that, I'm pinching it inside of the bar. We grab our bar plug like so. And then we just shove the excess inside. I'm gonna get all this excess inside. Once that's in there, we go ahead and we cap it through. And that, my friends, is a successful See if I can get a zoom in on it. Hold on. There is completely flush. Wait, let me stop. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened, camera. But you can see, I mean, that thing is completely flush. Nothing poking out on either side. Good to go. We're going to tighten her up. I'll show you the final results. There you go. Nothing showing that side. From the top, the tape looks phenomenal. Nothing sticking out. Bar plug, nothing sticking out. The tape looks professional. So you can use this on either a circular bar, an ergonomic bar, a round bar. You can start it lower, you can start it halfway, you can do whatever you want. But uh, I've been running this for a while now. I have over a thousand kilometers on my bike with it. I've had other bikes that have 5,000 miles on it. You know, and then, and then it just goes to, to wherever you want. As long as you're not resting your entire body weight on here, even if you do a normal tape job and you rest your entire body weight on the tape over and over again, you're going to get excessive wear right here. You're meant to be riding in the hoods. You're meant to be riding here. But on this corner piece where a lot of people tend to get lazy and rest their hands on there, and then they get fatigued and they don't use their cores and they lock out their elbows and they put everything on top of there, especially when you wear gloves, you're going to have excessive wear there. So, But I have not had any of this tape unravel on me. I have not had any of this tape come loose on me. Everything's tight on here. Everything's good to go, and it's a phenomenal job. So let me know what you guys think down in the video below, all right? Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'm not going to do the other side because I'm freaking hot as hell. I'll see you guys in the next video.